Hello again, continuing on with section um, five, we're gonna um, get a little bit more specific in our parallelogram kind of understanding. There's a few more specific shapes that we can learn about. So we're gonna learn about rhombi, which is also a rhombus, and squares. And I just wanna remind you that these two things still have all of those properties of remember that parallelogram. And remember those six properties and we'll review them in just a second. So um, just getting into this lesson, a rhombus is a quadrilateral with all four sides congruent. So again, it is a parallelogram, so it has all those six properties. And then the one big one um, that sets it apart is all sides are now congruent. Now, that doesn't mean it's a square because we don't know if it has four right angles, but um, opposite angles are congruent now. And um, they are also consecutive that are supplementary. So rhombus specific, it has four congruent sides. Now a square definition is it's a quadrilateral with four right angles and four congruent sides. So notice, that a square also has the rhombus property. So a square will always be considered a rhombus also, but we cannot say that all rhombuses are squares. We cannot say that. All right, let's look at some um, characteristics of a rhombus. So, if it is in the rhombus family, one, we have to know it's a parallelogram for this characteristic to be true. So if a parallelogram is a rhombus, then the diagonals are now perpendicular. So AC would be perpendicular to BC. Now again, remember that because it's a parallelogram, we also know that it is, they are bisecting each other. A little different from a rectangle. All right, so we know that the diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other and they're perpendicular. But also another thing that separates them is that if a parallelogram is a rhombus, then each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. So the diagonal bisects. And remember, that means cuts it into two congruent parts, two congruent angles. So that means that if I'm looking at NQ, it's going to bisect 5 and 6 now become congruent, and 7 and 8 now become congruent. And really, all four of those are congruent because we know that opposite angles are congruent. So really, 5 is congruent to 6, which is also congruent to 7, which is also congruent to 8. Um, and then again, the other diagonal, RP, bisects. Now 3 is congruent to 4, and 1 is congruent to 2. So it's bisecting opposite angles. All right, let's see how we can put that into a problem. So the we have a rhombus. We know that. Um, that enters, the diagonals intersect at point V. If angle W, Z, X, so the angle W, I go to Z, and I go over to X, so that angle is 39.5 degrees. I am asked to find, and that mine is covered up a little bit, Z, Y, X. So I'm asked to find Z, Y, X, that entire angle. Let's see what we know. We first know that a rhombus, the diagonals bisect um, the angles, and really opposite angles, 
So if we know that this side is 39.5, because it bisects it, I also know this is 39.5. All right, so um, I also, because it's a rhombus, know that a rhombus is a parallelogram. And notice if I'm talking about this angle here, and I'm trying to find that angle, remember that these two angles are consecutive. And because a rhombus is a parallelogram, we know that consecutive angles are supplementary. So, I can say, because I know this whole angle, the measure of angle WZY is 39.5 plus 39.5, which gives me an angle of 79 degrees. And I'm trying to find this angle over here. I can say the measure of angle WZY plus the measure of angle, the one we are asked to find, ZYX equals 180 degrees. Remember, that's what supplementary is. I'm just going to substitute. So 79 plus the measure of angle ZYX equals 180 degrees. If I subtract, showing my work, I can get the measure, I'm going to move up here, the measure of angle ZYX to equal 101 degrees by subtracting that 79 from both sides. So this angle ends up equaling 101 degrees, which also makes this 101 degrees. And then again, if you know it bisects, I can always find part of that angle right here if I divide that by 101 by 2. All right, let's move on to the next. My scroll does not seem to be wanting to work very well. All right, let's move on to the next one. We know it's a rhombus, and we know that those diagonals intersect at point V. We know that uh, Wx is 8x minus 5. And I know that Wz is 6x plus 3. All right, well, what do we know? Well, we know by the definition of a rhombus, it has four congruent sides. So I know that... Wx equals Wz, which also equals Zy, which also equals Xy. Well, I do know these two links because they gave them to me. So I can actually set them equal to each other, 8x minus 5. I can just substitute equals 6x plus 3. I can go ahead and solve this equation. Subtracting 6x, I'm also going to add 5 to both sides. You do not have to do it in the same step. I get 2x equals 8. Dividing by 2x now equals 4. Pretty simple, just using those properties of your rhombus. All right, go ahead and stop this video. Do your next two checkpoints. Really use those properties of the rhombus. All right, and here are those next two checkpoints, answers, 63 and 6. All right, just a concept summary. This is a pretty good um, visual of what we have learned up to this point, up through section 6.5. So our big picture, remember, our big family tree, we are parallelograms. And the other day we learned about um, parallelograms. And one of the side of the families are rectangles. Um, and then today we are now on this other side, um, rhombi or rhombuses. And notice that because you know how to read a Venn diagram, everything 
that a rectangle has a square does and everything a rhombus does a square does. So um, big picture, all parallelograms have opposite sides that are parallel, opposite sides that are congruent, opposite angles that are congruent, diagonals that bisect each other, and consecutive angles are supplementary. Um, 6, 4, we learned about rectangles, and we know that the diagonals are congruent. That is kind of what separates a rectangle from a pair, just a regular parallelogram. Today we learned about rhombuses, and we know that the diagonals are perpendicular, and the diagonals bisect opposite angles. Well, because a square is a rhombus and it is also a rectangle, everything, let me erase this, everything that a rectangle has, a square is going to have. And everything that a rhombus has, a square is going to have. So it kind of, it's all kind of a trickle down effect, kind of like the genes in your family. Um, the genes that your mom have will be passed down to you and the genes that your dad have will be passed down to you. So it's kind of like that family tree. Our grandparents are the parallelograms. Our parents are the rectangle and the rhombus. And then this is our child that um, the traits get passed down through. All right, so if you ever need to go back and revisit those characteristics, there they are. Um, and let's look at how do we show or prove that it's a rhombus. There's a few different ways, um, kind of like what we did with rectangles. The first way, if the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, so we know it's a parallelogram, and we see the diagonals are perpendicular, then it's a rhombus. Looking for those perpendicular diagonals. The second one, if we know um, the it's a parallelogram and the diagonals bisect, or even just one diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles, so diagonals bisect opposite angles, then it's going to be a rhombus. So we know that if W, Y, um, 1 is congruent to 2, 3 is congruent to 4, we know that that can be a rhombus. And the third way, which is pretty, it's a kind of a new concept. If one pair of consecutive sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So if I know that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram, a, B is congruent to B, C, then I know it's a rhombus. So I only need one pair of consecutive sides to be congruent, that parallelogram to be congruent. Then I know it's a rhombus. All right, those are the three. And the last one, the last concept we need to look at if a quadrilateral is both a rectangle and a rhombus then that is what makes us a square all righty we're going to stop this video and we'll get we'll move on to part two in just a second